It seems like cities all over the world are throwing millions and millions of dollars to build new futuristic skyscrapers. But what about the city that's spending millions of dollars to keep one from crashing into the ground? Anyone who has lived in San Francisco, visited San Francisco, or watched the opening of Full House knows that the city has one of the most beautiful skylines in all of the world. So when one of the city's famous skyscrapers started leaning over, a plan had to be put together to save it. The supposed rescue mission involves a process known as underpinning or strengthening the building's foundation. There will be 52 new structures along the tower which should fix 50% of the tilt over 10 years. As you might expect, this plan is going to be neither quick nor cheap. The estimate they gave the city was that it would cost around $100 million to finish the repairs. It will also take around a year just to complete, though anyone familiar with construction projects like this knows that that year is more wishful thinking than anything else. For that kind of money though, you gotta ask, is it even worth it? I mean, how much would it cost to just take the whole thing down? Well, a similar building in Detroit was brought down in 2015. Charges were set and the entire thing imploded down to the ground in less than 30 seconds. If you look really closely at that footage, I'm pretty sure you can see the Joker slowly walking away from the rubble. This controlled explosion was a lot more expensive than you might think. It cost $898 thousand dollars just to demolish this place. So yeah, that 100 mil might actually be the money saving plan. So how exactly does a building like this start sinking into the ground? Well, pretty much everyone involved in this has tried pointing the finger at someone else to blame. The developers were quick to throw the Trans Bay Joint Powers Authority under the bus claiming that their construction of the Trans Bay Transit Center caused the sinkage. Though they fired back that the building had already sunk 10 inches before the transit center had even begun construction. In order to get to the bottom of it, the Concrete Steel Reinforcement Institute made a case study of the building. It essentially lays the blame on the friction piles. They are the cylinders dug into the ground with the weight of the building on top. It's been said to think of them like a broomstick shoved into the sand. Despite how easy it would be at first to push a broomstick into the top of the sand, eventually you would find it nearly impossible due to friction. The building is essentially the same thing with just a bunch of giant steel broomsticks instead. This is a pretty normal process to use, but for some reason it just isn't working for this building, which could be a danger to both the citizens living inside and outside the building. Even after the tilting was discovered and the city declared the building safe to live in, residents still complained about problems relating to the tower's leaning. One day in September, for example, residents apparently heard creaking sounds, incredibly loud pops, and even reported that they had randomly shattered windows. Windows that were supposed to be able to withstand a hurricane, by the way. This basically sounds like the slowest moving horror movie of all time. The entire project came under fire again when a similar tower in Florida collapsed tragically. This feeling of unease about the building's future only increased when they discovered that despite efforts to stabilize it, the building continued to sink at a faster rate than they expected. Though, don't be too worried about it. While it might sound like a disaster movie, we're talking about inches of sinkage over years. So, not as dramatic as the headlines make it seem. Well, let me take you back in time to when the Millennium Towers were a prize in San Fran's skyline and not a source of shame. Construction on this 58-floor skyscraper began in 2005 and was completed in 2009. The entire project was said to cost somewhere around $350 million. While many would probably love to tell you they knew this building was going to be a disaster from the start, and actually was the exact opposite. The tower was hailed as a work of art, 
with its late modernist exterior, beautiful naturally lit apartments, and epic amenities such as a wine cellar, a pool, and a private lounge particularly called out. It was even climbed by Spider Dan himself, who uses suction cups to scale enormous skyscrapers all over the world, a rare, if completely unwanted, honor. Living at the Millennium wasn't cheap either. Certain apartments could be worth a small fortune. There are examples of homes that are worth over four million dollars. If you spend that kind of money on a place, you really expect it to not sink into the ground at the very least. Today though, it looks like the price ranges from around 600,000 to 1.5 million. That's with the crumbling slowly into the ground discount. Turns out that back in the day, this tower was more of an awards darling than Zendaya. It ironically won the American Concrete Institute Award, the American Society of Civil Engineers Structural Engineering Project of the Year, California Construction's Outstanding Project Management Award, among many others. Something tells me that this building's award-winning days are long over, unlike Zendaya, who will probably win her sixth Oscar when she's like 97. Imagine waking up in your new apartment in beautiful San Francisco, only to find out from the building's owners that the entire thing is starting to tilt and sink into the ground. That's exactly what happened in 2016, and as you can imagine, people were not happy about it. Not only were homeowners upset about the potential dangers of living in the tilting skyscraper, but they felt as though they had been misled when they agreed to live there in the first place. According to accounts from residents, they all got invited to a big meeting where they were informed of the sinking slash leaning problem and explicitly told that it would be, quote, no big deal, that they likely wouldn't even notice. Clearly, they didn't run that language by a lawyer first because it would come back to bite them later when it turned out to be actually quite a big deal. The residents then started putting together the pieces that they had already noticed this problem without truly realizing what it was. Pools had to be reconstructed. The parking garage was crumbling in the corner. There was water damage everywhere. They could roll marbles across their floor at an unsettlingly fast rate. It was all stacking up and there was only one thing to be done. That's right, lawsuit time. Hundreds of lawsuits were in the air, ironically holding up the repair plans on the very same building. All of this has a happy ending though, or as happy as these things get. In 2019, they reached a settlement with the roughly 400 injured parties who either currently lived or used to live in the towers. While no exact figure was given, I'm pretty sure they just dropped a massive pile of cash off at each and every room in the building. Constructing towers in San Francisco can cost upwards of $1 billion. So I'm willing to bet that everyone is throwing a lot more money to ensure these babies don't end up tilting over. 